Hello and welcome to class 4. Now we are starting to talk about social media analytics. Let's start with an introduction to the subject. And what better way to start than with an interesting story? The story goes that the Washington Police Department had launched a manhunt to nab one of their own officers, a man called Captain John Anderton. Now John Anderton was supposed to be a murder suspect. However, the funny thing about this story is that the murder had not actually taken place. The victim was still alive and the would-be murderer, John Anderton, wasn't even aware that he's going to commit a murder. But the Washington Police Department had specific information that he will be committing a murder in 36 hours and to prevent that, they had launched a manhunt to catch him. Now, if the story seems unreal and out of this world, I won't really blame you because it's not really real. I'm talking about a story taken from a movie called Minority Report. You may have watched it. It's a Steven Spielberg movie. Tom Cruise was in it, released in 2002. Maddie, you've seen it? Uh, yes, long ago. Did you like it? Loved it, loved it. Yes. Especially the part about knowing that someone will be committing a murder in 36 hours. It was too cool. But yeah, the <laughs> cool thing about this was that they were using preemptive technologies in order to prevent crimes. And that's something that may happen in the future. Now, we are still a few decades away from the 2050s when, you know, this movie is based. Uh, but fact is that uh, data and stats is already being used by governments and governmental organizations to prevent future things from happening or, or even predict future happenings and take corrective measures if required. Uh, we've seen some of the dictatorial and oppressive regimes of the past and even some of the current ones have been using social media data and other data that's available on the internet uh, to to actually you know monitor citizens activities to see which way the wind is blowing and to be able to control people in some ways if possible we, not not just dictatorial and oppressive governments even uh, democratic governments like the united states government has has been in the eye of the storm Edward Snowden made some startling revelations of how the U.S. government has been snooping uh, not just on other world leaders, but even on its own citizens. And the U.S. government came up with the uh, explanation that they are doing it in order to prevent uh, terror attacks from happening. In fact, they are claiming how since 9-11, there's been no terror attack in the U.S., primarily because they are using uh, stats and data to prevent these sort of uh, happenings or these sort of incidents to happen again. So we are seeing that uh, data, especially social media data, is providing a gold mine of information for for governments to cull, analyze, and predict, uh, you know, future happen, future events, uh, and take corrective actions. The U.S. police force, in fact, is using analytics tools to identify gang members and their activities, and is using it to prevent new recruitment from taking place. Now, whether they are already doing it or not, governments the world over are recognizing the importance of the ability to mine this dazzling amounts of social media data that's available, to spot and analyze the hidden pieces that will identify useful information and trends, not only related to national security, but also disaster management, identifying citizen issues, reactions to policy announcements, and more. And just like governments, companies are also uh, looking at this data and analyzing it for their own advantage. Uh, Unilever, for example, analyzes uh, social media data, not just to track product reviews and, you know, what people are saying about their products and brands, but also to track uh, consumer sentiment on new ads that they are releasing. Uh, also, new age companies like dot-coms, especially, uh, if you look at the UK-based sports apparel brand Zagora.com, uh, they ran a challenge contest on Facebook where participants had to share content to be eligible for the prize. The contest posts on Facebook also included links to a landing page where people could enter their details to start receiving offers and other communication from Zagora. The marketing team at Zagora tracked the data generated by Facebook quite closely and they saw that uh, Facebook led to about 5,300 click-throughs to their website and there was about a 41% conversion rate from those click-throughs. Now, from the multiple contests that they ran on Facebook, they were able to uh, refine their campaign on Facebook 
eventually leading to a stage where today they're getting 17% of their sales directly through Facebook. That's how effectively they utilized little bits of information that they were able to get out from Facebook, refining their strategy at each step, eventually leading to greater revenue for the company. That's the power of effective social media analytics. Now, I'm pretty sure you would have definitely tracked the number of likes, comments that you get on your Facebook posts. Now, what you're doing there is really analyzing the data that you're able to capture at first glance from, you know, when you log into Facebook. Likewise, if you want to go a little deeper, so if you have a page on Facebook, you will get insights from Facebook that can give you a top level view of how people are interacting with your, with your Facebook page. Uh, you know, I've seen so many people use uh, these free tools that are available to track their Twitter interactions. Uh, so, so individuals are also using uh, data to analyze and see, you know, how their, how their social media interactions are progressing and refining it as they go along. Now, what makes social media such a goldmine of stats and data is that every action on social media like, uh, let's say, likes or favorites or comments or retweets or repins, each action can actually be recorded and stored. Now, because all this data and stats is available, analysts can actually dive into it, analyze it, interpret it, uh, and use it, make sense of it for decision makings for themselves or for their organizations. Zillions and zillions of data is being uh, is being generated out of social media every day in fact facebook by the end of 2013 was handling 300 petabytes of data every day and it's a number that has only grown exponentially since then uh, if you're not really sure what 300 petabytes of data actually means one petabyte is equal to 1000 terabytes and 300 petabytes a day makes it let's say if you were to have MP3 music of 300 petabytes, it'll take you 600,000 years to run through that playlist. Uh, a lot of big companies have got into social media data mining and analytics, uh, and even social media tools and platforms uh, are, are looking at analytics in a big way. If you were to look at the big companies, there are big companies like IBM, SaaS, Adobe, Oracle, SAP, HP, Salesforce.com, all these companies have departments, tools, and products uh, specifically for social media data analytics. Uh, a lot of startups have actually uh, come up and continue to come up in this space. Uh, there are companies like Simply Measured, Sysomos, Social Bakers, Netbase, Brandwatch. Indian companies, in fact, have been uh, at the forefront of social media data analytics. Companies like Simplify360, German8, ThoughtBuzz, Unmetric, Abzuba, Blue Ocean, all these are Indian companies in this space who have actually made a mark for themselves uh, in social media data analytics. Of course, Google is a name that's synonymous with anything to do with internet. And Google Analytics uh, from 2012 started providing data from social media as well. Uh, Social media platforms like Facebook provides uh, detailed reports in their insight section. Other popular web analytics tools like HubSpot have also started providing social media data. So we are seeing a convergence of web analytics and social media analytics. And sometime in the future, there may not actually be a distinction between the two as clear as there is today. There's demand for a lot of professionals uh, and this space is continuing to reinvent itself because uh, it's, an, it's a space that is emerging. And, and we see a lot of innovation and, and uh, you know, path-breaking stuff to be happening in this space in the future. And, and this space is only going to grow. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Now, we know that marketers love data because data and its analysis is what provides them proof of you know, which are the investments that worked for them, which are the investments did, that did not work for them. And they can use it for decision making about future campaigns uh, and activities that they may do for their brands. Now, despite all that's happening in the social media data and analytics space, marketers are actually still not very happy with what they're getting out of their social media investments. 
One of the reasons is that they are not able to see a direct ROI from whatever they are investing into social media. I think part of the challenge of uh, ROI measurement or social media is the fact that social media itself uh, does not necessarily always result in a very specific user action like a purchase. If you look at the sources of data, they are very disparate. So if you are on social media, if you're running a campaign on social media, the bigger the organization you are, the more likely you are to be running it on different platforms at the same time. So as a marketer, you would want to be able to analyze the whole piece at a single place, but because the data sources can be so disparate, even though there are solutions trying to bring them all together, uh, but clearly, you know, that uh, area is, needs improvement. Then technology could be an issue like, uh, you know, in some cases, a lot of uh, social media analytics is focusing on sentiments and, and telling marketers how people are reacting to brand campaigns, as you were mentioning, or product launches, etc. Uh, but those technologies, while improving all the time, are not yet at a level where they actually, um, you know, make a significant difference or give you a very real picture. So. For example, sentiment analysis is roughly at 70% accuracy right now, uh, the best solution. So until that moves to 95% accuracy or, you know, uh, at it's, it's impactful at that level, people will find that they are able to draw more conclusions by looking at the data visually than, than uh, you know, following analytical tools. And the third factor uh, that can come in is the uh, strategic uh, issues within the organization where we often see that uh, the team behind social media is running on a completely different track as compared to the rest of the organization. So while uh, the person responsible for social media is talking about how engagement and brand mentions have increased on social media, someone sitting at the top is saying, oh, but this year our focus was on quality. You know, why are we, what is social media doing for quality improvement? And those kinds of gaps exist, which is why I think marketers, uh, while seeing the benefits of social media and understanding that it's a very crucial part of the mix, are still not sure about how they can evangelize it or make everyone in the organization believe that this is of value for us. But despite these flaws and drawbacks of social media data that exist at this point in time, uh, there is clear evidence to suggest that organizations using social media effectively are performing better on several business parameters than those that are not. For example, small businesses that blog uh, regularly are reportedly generating 125% more leads than similar organizations that are not blogging regularly. 80% uh, of salespeople that are active on social media outperform those that are not. And over 75% of B2C brands and companies and over 40% of B2B companies have acquired customers through Facebook. But beyond percentages and stats, there are stories of success that reveal how social media data is already having an impact on business decision making. Like the story of Dell that we heard from Patrick Morrissey, who is the Vice President of Marketing at Datasift. Datasift is one of the largest analysts of Twitter data. He talks of the time when social media analytics revealed to Dell that sentiment suddenly went negative for a specific product of theirs. This was sudden and completely outside of expected sentiment. Dell's response was to dig into details, conduct an internal review, make a global price change and they reverse the sentiment back to positive all in a matter of 24 hours. Basically, that's the pace with which they spotted the trend and took corrective action. And within 24 hours, the sentiment went from negative to positive. Yeah. And this, as we mentioned, this is from technology that's not even, uh, you know, at 100% right now. Now, our focus while discussing the various aspects of social media analytics will be to help you reach a stage where you are able to effectively harness the tools and technologies available to you to derive actionable insights from social media, just like the team at Dell did. But before mentioning the different topics we'll cover under social media analytics, let's spend a couple of minutes talking about what the term social media analytics actually means. Wikipedia summarizes social media analytics as measuring plus analyzing plus interpreting interactions and associations between people, topics and ideas. This simple definition highlights the most important point to remember when it comes to the term analytics in reference to social media. That simply recording and presentation of data 
does not constitute analytics. To really gain any benefit from storing all the data that your social media efforts will generate, you also need to analyze and interpret the data that you see. The real impact of analytics is felt when all the analysis and interpretation leads to actionable insights, like in the case of Dell or in the case of Zagaro. An actionable insight could be a new product idea, identification of a set of influencers to reach out to, maybe a competitor strategy that you could adopt, or even the kind of content that you need to develop to drive more engagement. In every case, it will provide the organization with a specific action to take that may positively influence the impact of your social media efforts or any other function within the organization. That is social media analytics for you. Over the next few discussions, our aim will be to provide you with a framework for social media analytics that will help you determine what needs to be measured, how you can analyze what you see, and then draw insights from it. So analytics it is. We'll see you again in the next section.